Cisco Certified Network Associate Day 10. Welcome back everybody. I'm Imran Rafai, your trainer for this entire series. Uh, today we would be dealing with the switch port modes and different functions of a switch. So without wasting much time, let's get straight into today's class. Right, um, like I said, the overview of today's class, we would look at the switch port modes and we will look at switch functions. The switch has two modes. The first mode is the access mode. An access mode is used when you are connecting a switch port to an end device. So let's say if you want to connect your computer or your desktop to a switch, that particular port we configure as an access port, right? The configuration or the, the command for configuring a port, switch port in access mode is switch port mode access and by this time by by this level in in our uh, training videos you should be able to identify that uh, when the command the switch port prompt this when the switch cli prompt says uh, config hyphen if this should tell you that this is a command uh, that is being typed in an interface subcommand right so that is i have used uh, interface fa0 slash 1 or fa0 slash something and that is why the prompt has changed to hyphen if right so this is a command in the subcommand under interface on a switch so you go into any interface whichever interface that you want to convert to an access port you just go there and say switch port mode access uh, typically when you type a command like switch port mode access there is another VLAN command that we need to give but at the moment don't worry about VLAN at the moment only worry about the mode so like I said the first mode we're talking about is the access mode and like I have mentioned here this mode is used if you are connecting that particular port to an end device right like your computer or your desktop the other mode the sw a switch port can take is known as the trunk port right so what's a trunk port a trunk port is a port that is connecting two switches so if you're connecting a port of a switch to another switch right if you're connecting to another port so basically a switch is connected to a switch that particular port through which you're connecting a switch to another switch should always be a trunk right so trunk the word trunk is a very cisco word normally all the other uh, manufacturers call it a tagged port but Cisco calls it a trunk port so typically both the trunk port or the tag port both of them have same function what they do is they make sure that they carry all the traffic that is there in a switch right so basically they share so at the moment we, we don't know we haven't spoken much about VLANs but uh, when we talk about VLAN we will come back more into trunk and we'll talk different aspects but at the moment you know that trunk mode is used when a switch is connected to another switch access mode is used when that switch is connected to a uh, end device right here when I say switch what I literally mean is that particular port so these modes are not for the switch these modes are for the port the particular port that we're talking about right so these are the two modes uh, each switch port can be in and uh, uh, just like how we discussed the uh, command for putting a, a port in access mode the command to put a port in the trunk mode is switch port mode trunk right so when we talk about switch port modes there is another protocol we need to talk about and that is the dynamic trunking protocol now this pro protocol is a Cisco proprietary protocol that means to say that you cannot use this protocol with any other switch right any other switch manufactured by any other manufacturer so only if you're using a Cisco switch you would be able to use this concept or this protocol called DTP of course I know there are some manufacturers because Cisco is such a huge company and such a uh, well accepted company in the industry there are some manufacturers who still who makes use of the DTP concept of Cisco right but um, since this this series this video series is about Cisco and CCNA we are going to stick to Cisco right so in DTP there are three modes or rather there are two modes dynamic uh, desirable mode and dynamic auto and the third thing that you see here on screen is no negotiate that is a way to disable DTP so let's start from the top 
when I when a switch port is in the dynamic desirable mode what it does is it immediately starts sending out DTP packets and that means it starts sending DTP packet to negotiate and what is it negotiating it's negotiating a trunk so you you should get the hint from the protocol name it's a dynamic trunking protocol that means what does it negotiate it negotiates a trunk so the minute another device is connected to that port and if that port is in dynamic desirable mode what is this desiring it is desiring to become a trunk so it's going to tell the other port okay i would like to become a trunk what do you want to become right and if the other side also is in dynamic desirable boom immediately both of them become trunk ports right but let's assume one side is in dynamic auto the next command here so one side is in dynamic auto the other side is in dynamic desirable again the dynamic desirable switch will send a DTP packet to the dynamic auto switch and the dynamic auto switch will say fine I'm configured for auto that means I can do whatever you want so you want to become trunk fine let's become trunk but if there is a case where both these switches are in dynamic auto then that's a problem both of them auto will do nothing because dynamic auto is a very flexible state it just waits for DTP negotiation it will never initiate a dynamic a trunking uh, negotiation so if you keep both the side as the uh, dynamic auto then it will not work right so if you want to create trunking automatically then you need to make one side at least or both side if you want as dynamic desirable now is it no you might say okay this is good you can create automatic trunking right you can create automatic trunking so you if you if somebody if you connect another switch automatically that negotiates a trunk and the trunk is formed but come to think of it keeping your switch port in dynamic auto or dynamic desirable is not very desirable why because let's assume in in our organization we have kept all our switches in dynamic auto or dynamic desirable now if there is somebody who wants to hack into our switch or let's assume one of our employees turns out to be a bad guy and he wants to hack into the system it's very easy all he has to do is get another switch configure that port whichever port is connecting to our uh, office switch with dynamic desirable so immediately it will start negotiating trunk with this and if it negotiates a trunk and if this is in dynamic desirable or dynamic auto they will actually form a trunk the problem with forming a trunk with a switch is that it will send all the traffic a copy of all the traffic to that switch because it's a switch right so this is how trunks work if two switches are in trunk or three switches are in trunk they will share the same data it is it is like extending your switch if your switch has got eight ports you connect another eight port switch and create a trunk between them it is as if that entire switch is a 16 port switch that's how it is basically by default I'm, I'm obviously there are ways of pruning traffic making sure that traffic does not go from one switch to the other but on a general case by default if you connect two switches and form a trunk between them it is as if those two eight port switches have become one large 16 port switch right so if a if a hacker gets access to our switch and creates a trunk with his uh, hacking switch then your your company switch is actually sending out all the traffic to his switch and he can create like like we discussed in our last video he can use any packet analysis software and literally analyze the entire traffic of our organization so the ideal situation would be to uh, switch off or rather non-negotiate by using this third command there which says switch port no negotiate so use that command and uh, disable DTP if you're not using it right so that's how you disable it so when you create switch port access switch port mode access that disables trunking that's you're statically configuring the modes like we discussed in the last slide so you can statically configure whether you want mode uh, access or mode trunk but if you want dynamic then we make use of DTP right so that, that's the concepts and I'm, I'm sure uh, I hope you have understood so far right next let's go into the switching functions basically switch has three functions or we're going to discuss three functions today and that's the address learning function of the switch 
forwarding decisions of the switch and loop avoidances. So let's start with address learning. How does the switch learn addresses? Now we have discussed this many times uh, in our previous videos but uh, let's let me because we're talking about switching here let me talk about how switches learn address once again. Now like I told you in one of my old video when a switch comes on within 30 to 40 seconds all the devices connected to that switch literally starts chatting. Now that's that's how that's what computers are for. Computers love chatting. Computers send broadcast every time. They keep sending. They keep talking, right? So it says, "Hey, this is my MAC address," and 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 they keep sending broadcast. So uh, let's say there are five devices. When the first device sends, you know, my source address is this, you know, he, he sends broadcast, different broadcasts, might be app broadcast, it might be your, you know, uh, different, different services that's running on your operating system, those try to communicate with the network, and every time that device communicates with the switch, it has to send its source MAC address. So, if the switch gets, let's say, uh, from the first device that's connected to port 1, if it gets a broadcast message, it reads the source MAC address of uh, that device and it says okay my port 1 is connected to this MAC address right so it creates an entry in its MAC address table or the CAM table right uh, at, this, at the same time maybe second device third device fourth device fifth device all these devices start sending broadcast and every time it sends a broadcast it immediately picks the source IP source MAC address and creates an entry in the MAC table now if one of those device wants to communicate with another MAC address it sends a packet and the switch looks at the destination MAC address and it looks at the CAM table it knows that the, that particular MAC address is sitting on one of those ports so it can immediately make a switching decision so that's how the address learning process is now we spoke about forwarding decision so let's look let's look at it a little more uh, there are two types of switching for forwarding decisions that a layer 2 switch makes. It can use the cut through switching or it can use store and forward switching. Now what's the difference between these? Let's assume one device wants to communicate with another uh, device. So what it says, it says okay this is my destination MAC address, this is my source MAC address and all the other information that follows, right? In cut through switching, when the switch receives a frame, it immediately looks at the destination MAC address. So it just waits for the first few uh, bytes of uh, information by which time it it has all the information it needs that is the destination MAC address and it immediately starts sending that frame out on that interface. So it doesn't wait to receive the entire frame. As soon as it receives the destination MAC address detail it starts forwarding whatever information it gets to that destination port. Right? That is how cut through works. Now let's look at store and forward. What, what store and forward does is it waits, the switch waits until it receives the entire frame. So it waits, it gets the entire frame, it runs through a, a error detection, it checks if there are any errors that were induced during transmission. If nothing, it will start forwarding out the destination port. Now some people might say, okay, cut through is good. And some might say no 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 we need error detection so store and forward is good but like I said there's no right answer you e either of them can be right depending on your situation do you want faster services do you want the switch to work faster then you would go with cut through do you want more reliable uh, switching then maybe you would go with store and forward right but these are the two different switching methods the switch layer to switches implement next we'll look at loop avoidance now what is loop avoidance um, if we if you remember from my old video I said that when a switch receives broadcast what it does is it takes that and it sends out in all the ports so let me take a pair um, let me try to show it in writing okay so this is a switch okay and this is a switch right I don't have my pen today so I'll have to make use of mouse uh, this is a switch so when you see two arrows like this drawn on any logical diagram you need to know that's a switch right so that's a switch uh, let me change the color mm, right so normally you would connect one switch to another switch and this becomes what yes it's a trunk you're good you're learning very fast okay so you connect two switches 
using a trunk so now this is your trunk but uh, as your network grows you wouldn't want to just have one wire you might say okay we might have a disconnection sometimes so instead of doing the whole wiring maybe these two switches are in two different flows so instead of keeping one wire and just waiting for that to disconnect or get cut or, or you know go faulty and it's it's a big headache to rewire especially if it's in two different flows so what you normally do is you would keep two wires or three wires it's some backup wires right so this is like a backup wire so again because it's connecting two switches it's a trunk port so you would say of course we can di disconnect this and keep un unless uh, this goes faulty and then when it goes faulty you can connect these of course you can do that no problem but ideally i and i'm, I'm sure almost all uh, network administrators would want the wires connected they don't want to have that headache of tracing those cables and putting plugging it again so we would connect these two cables so the problem is when you connect these two cables and if you connect two devices switches um, uh, with two cables what happens is if there is let's say there's one device here right this is computer and if this computer sends a broadcast right it sends a broadcast now what does a broadcast do according to what we know when the switch receives a broadcast it will send that traffic out on all the switch ports that means it will send the traffic here and it will send the traffic here right so it will go here it will go here now when this device gets this broadcast it will take that and it will send it out on this port right it's a broadcast that switch doesn't know that that broadcast is coming from the same switch right but for for that switch uh, it is another port so it's going to send it out here and the traffic coming from this port the switch is going to take that and says ah okay you need to go out on this port right the same thing happens here it comes all the way here this switch is going to think okay that's another broadcast i'm going to take it put it on this port and whatever traffic this traffic coming through this port this switch is going to take and put it back here and this process will continue it'll continue it'll go around and round and round and round and round and this process is known as the layer 2 loop now it's very difficult to uh, identify a loop if at all you have a loop in your system it's very very difficult to identify because you wouldn't know there is no indication saying there is a loop i mean the switch wouldn't even know that there is a loop happening right unlike layer 3 traffic when we reach layer 3 we'll see that layer 3 has many loop prevents loop prevention mechanism but a layer 2 traffic does not have any loop prevention like time to live right so we don't have that concept of time to live for loop uh, layer 2 uh, packets um, so so how how to, how to solve this problem right one intelligent lady uh, wrote this protocol known as spanning tree protocol you could learn a little bit more about spanning tree protocol if you want by uh, you know, doing a wikipedia search but ju just to understand the concept of spanning tree and like i said we will come back to spanning tree a little later in the series but at the moment i just want to introduce you all to this concept so what is spanning tree protocol spanning tree protocol is a protocol that identifies if there are redundant links so if it sees that okay there is there are two links connecting to the same switch right these two switch same switch and two links connecting to that it knows that a loop will be formed so immediately it will it does what it has to do we will discuss that in the in, in a later part of this video when we discuss spanning tree in in depth right i promise you we will come back to it but for now it has its own protocol it uses its own rules it disconnects or logically i mean physically it's still connected but logically it disconnects one side of that uh, of the second cable so one pair of port is going to work perfectly so that's going to be the active link and then you will have a backup link with one of those ports logically shut right so it'll be shut now what happens if for uns for some unforeseen reason this cable gets disconnected right immediately stp will know that this link has stopped working it will enable this port and this and this port will start working and this will become the active link this is spanning tree protocol for you in very very 
short form. So basically to summarize spanning tree protocol is a mechanism to disconnect a backup line. So that's how this tree is. I mean, I, I think about spanning tree protocol like that. It's just like a tree falling on the road and this road is disconnected, right? So this is spanning tree. Uh, we will come back. A lot of topics that we discuss in the early stage uh, of CCNA, we will come back later with much more in depth. So this is what I keep telling my students. Don't worry if you don't understand too many things because it's like building the structure. If you're building a tall building, you don't start building from ground up you don't paint the walls on the ground floors and then start building you just build the frame the structure first from let's say floor zero from your ground floor till maybe if it's a 50 story building you build the frame for 50 stories and then you start putting the walls for that building right so most of the things we would be just brushing through now right so once we do the brush up we will come back and construct, construct the walls, right? So at the end of the series, maybe 40 videos or 45 videos or 50 videos, I don't know, I'm just doing, when I think there is a good topic that I need to add, I'll keep adding. So when we finish this entire series, trust me, you will have all the knowledge for your CCNA and trust me, you will have much, much, much more knowledge than what is required for your CCNA. So that's my promise. All you have to do is stick around and you will learn right so i think that's all that we want to discuss in today's video uh, thank you so much for watching uh, don't forget to like our uh, facebook page and don't forget to subscribe to our uh, youtube page and if you want like i said you know if, if you go out to our facebook page you will see that uh, we need more likes we need people to share our videos we need people to like our page invite your friends and uh, I'm going to set milestones now. If you go to our Facebook page, you will see uh, I am setting milestones. So if you if you have uh, if we, if you help us reach a certain amount, number of likes, we will put the next video. And you will see the milestones there. So it becomes very easy. If you want the next video, quickly go invite your friends. Invite, share that. Get the likes up, and automatically new videos will come. So 50 videos can take 50 years <laughs> I don't know or maybe it can take five months or maybe it can take five weeks it all depends on how you guys support us how you guys subscribe to our web, uh, uh, channel and how you guys uh, share our uh, uh, Facebook page so start liking start sharing and uh, share the love thank you so much for all the love and affection bye bye